Now, if you're new to using hand planes, the first time you use one on the wide surface of a board, you may get a little frustrated because the tool that was supposed to make the board nice and smooth is instead making grooves and scratches in the surface. These grooves are the result of the corners of the plane iron cutting below the surface of the board. We refer to them as plane tracks and they can be quite frustrating until you know how to make them go away. This is an exaggerated view of what's going on. When you use a blade that's ground straight across, it cuts an even depth, and what you end up with is the corners of the iron cutting below the surface of the wood, leaving square edges on either side. These square edges are the plane tracks that you can see and feel when you work the face of a board with a straight iron. The solution to plane tracks is to keep the corners of the iron from cutting into the board. We do this by shaping the edge of the iron into a gentle curve. We call this curve camber. This particular blade has an extreme amount of camber ground into the edge, but this extreme amount of camber is useful for demonstrating the concept. When the blade is inserted into the plane, we can see that it projects beneath the sole unevenly, cutting thickest at the middle, and then the shaving tapers to nothing at the outside edges. So as you can see, cambering the blade will keep the corners of the blade out of the cut in a wide surface, preventing plane tracks. However, the astute student will note that a cambered blade still leaves a trough, only a round trough instead of a square-sided trough. If we go back to our exaggerated example here, was the square trough created by the blade with square corners. When we camber the blade, we get a trough that tapers to nothing, but we still get a trough. Of course, if we're hand planing a tabletop in preparation for applying finish, neither one of these troughs is going to be acceptable. So you're probably still wondering, how is a cambered blade helpful? Well, the answer lies in the amount of camber. This blade here is a great example of how we can use camber. At first glance, it looks to be ground straight across with square corners. However, when we look closer, we can see that if we hold a straight edge up to the edge of the blade against the light, that there is in fact a very small amount of camber on the edge of the blade that we can use to our advantage. This blade has such a small amount of camber that if the cut is too deep, it will behave just like a blade with a square edge and the corners will dig in and leave plane tracks. However, if it is set for an extremely fine cut, the corners won't dig in and the trough left by the blade will be so shallow that it will look and feel flat. So when should you use camber in a blade? My rule of thumb is that every plane that's used to plane a board surface that's wider than the blade should have some amount of camber. How much camber a particular blade needs depends upon the job that that plane is intended to do. And we'll talk more about that later.